In this video, I will be making one of the pinkest liquids in existence, thiobenzyl chloride. Why, you might ask? Because it's not yellow, that's why. And it's also a reagent to make thionoesters, but that's not important and nobody cares for that besides crusty sulfur chemists. So to get started, I set up a heating mantle and put in a 500ml 3-neck flask, which I dried beforehand using a heat gun. I attached a Dimroth condenser and then add in a stir bar. Now I attach a gas adapter to the left neck that I connected to a gas washing bottle that contains sulfuric acid, which in turn is connected to a nitrogen cylinder. Bubbling the nitrogen through the sulfuric acid will make sure that the stream is dry, and I let it blow constantly through the setup. I attach a funnel, and then add in 5.5 grams of magnesium turnings. Then with a syringe, I add in 50 ml of anhydrous THF because the reaction will only work if the solvent is dry. Now I add some small pieces of iodine, which will remove the magnesium oxide coating and expose fresh magnesium. The mixture turns a dark orange, and I then attach a dropping funnel. Then to the dropping funnel, I add 100 ml of anhydrous THF with a syringe, and dissolve 15.7 ml of bromobenzene into it. I close it off with a stopper, and the setup should be mostly free of oxygen and moisture. Now I open the dropping funnel and drop in some of the bromobenzene solution to initiate the reaction. The color from the iodine disappears, and I start adding in the bromobenzene solution dropwise. In the reaction, the bromobenzene will react with the exposed magnesium to form the Grignard reagent phenylmagnesium bromide. The reaction generates some heat, but it doesn't really boil that much compared to when you would use diethyl ether. While the reaction is running, I stop the nitrogen flow and attach a drying tube to the top of the condenser, which will prevent moisture from entering the setup. After a while, the addition was complete, and I left it to stir for another hour. When that is done, I start the nitrogen flow again and open the dropping funnel. I add 50 ml of anhydrous THF, and then dissolve 18.2 ml of carbon disulfide into it. I stop with the dropping funnel again, and then dropwise add the carbon disulfide solution to the flask. I increase the exposure of the camera, and we can see the mixture turns red during the addition. In the reaction, the carbon disulfide will react with the phenylmagnesium bromide to form the magnesium bromide salt of dithiobenzoic acid. When the addition is complete, I leave it to stir for an hour. I then open the dropping funnel and add in 100 ml of water. I add the water to the flask to destroy any remaining phenylmagnesium bromide. There is a slight exotherm at the beginning, but not more after that. I then remove all of the adapters and gradually add concentrated hydrochloric acid to the mixture. The mixture begins to bubble from remaining magnesium metal, reacting with the hydrochloric acid, to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. The hydrochloric acid reacts with the dithiobenzoic acid magnesium bromide salt, to form the desired product, dithiobenzoic acid. Enough acid also has to be added, to make sure that the pH of the solution is low enough for the dithiobenzoic acid to stay protonated. If it's not acidic enough, dithiobenzoic acid will deprotonate and stay dissolved in the water. Also, part of the THF that is mixed with the water will get salted out and separate out together. I move the mixture to a separatory funnel and we can see that it has separated into two layers because the water layer is too acidic for most of the dithiobenzoic acid to stay dissolved. I separate the layers and then add the water layer back into the separatory funnel. I add 100 ml of diethyl ether to take up the remaining dithiobenzoic acid. We can see pretty much all of the red color has moved into the ether, and I separate the layers again. Now I have the combined organic layers that contain the product. I add some sodium sulfate to dry it, and then filter it through some cotton to remove it. I set the filtered up for short path vacuum distillation, to remove all of the THF, which needs to be removed for the next step. After a while, nothing more comes over, and a dark red purple liquid is left. Now this mixture still contains a lot of impurities, so I dissolve it again in 100 ml of diethyl ether. I move it back to the separatory funnel, and wash the flask once with some more ether. Then to the solution, I add an arbitrary amount and concentration of a sodium hydroxide solution. This basic water layer will force the dithiobenzoic acid to deprotonate, and form the salt sodium dithiobenzoate, which is soluble in water. So the product will move into the water layer, while some of the impurities will stay behind in the ether. It was very difficult to see the separation, both in real life and on camera, so I increased the exposure, and we see the two layers. Since it was so difficult to see, I didn't drain the water layer completely. I then add more sodium hydroxide solution, to take out the rest of the product. I also add a little bit more ether, to make sure all the impurities can be dissolved. I separate the layers again, and extract the ether layer again. I try to extract it once more, 
but the layer comes out pretty much completely clear. So I discarded it. And also discard the ether layer with the impurities. Now I have the combined extract. And some solid potential impurities are floating around. Anyhow, now to return the dithiobenzoic acid back to its protonated form, I acidify the water again by adding concentrated hydrochloric acid. Until the dithiobenzoic acid separates out. I return it all to the separatory funnel, but their densities are very similar. So I add MTBE to take up the dithiobenzoic acid, and get it all on top. I separate the layers, and then return the water layer, and extract that once more with MTBE. I then take the combined MTBE extract, and dry it with sodium sulfate. I filter the mixture to take out the sodium sulfate, and then set the filter up for short path vacuum distillation, to remove all of the MTBE. After a while, it is all gone, and a dark red oil is left behind. The oil solidifies when cooled to room temperature, and I try to move most of it into a container for storage. It is very viscous, and I assist the transfer with a heat gun to melt it off the spatula. When that is done, I measure the yield to be about 12 grams, of which I transferred half to this container. The dithiobenzoic acid is a dark red sticky solid, with a melting point close to room temperature. Now for the next step, I heated the other half of the product to get it to liquefy and pour it all into a flask. I wash the container with about 50 ml of DCM and transfer that to the flask as well. I then add a stir bar and move the flask to a stir plate. Now I add 6 ml of thionyl chloride and stopper the flask lightly to allow any gases to escape. I then leave it to stir for an hour. In the reaction, two equivalents of thionyl chloride will chlorinate the dithiobenzoic acid to thiobenzoic chloride while also forming sulfur dioxide, disulfur dichloride, and hydrochloric acid. When that is done, it looks pretty much the same, and I set the flask in a heating mantle. I then attach a short path distillation apparatus, and pull a vacuum to remove all of the DCM, remaining thionyl chloride, and any gases that might still be present. After a while, nothing more comes over, so I remove the apparatus, and replace it with a small fractionating column, with a small short path distillation apparatus on top. In between the pump and the apparatus is a trap, and I pull a strong vacuum on the setup. I increase the heating strongly, and start assisting the distillation with a heat gun. At this low pressure and high temperature, I can simply distill over the thiobenzoyl chloride. After a while, it starts boiling, and a pink-purple condensate is forming in the apparatus. I keep assisting it with a heat gun, and we see the pink thiobenzoyl chloride starts distilling over, and collecting in the receiving flask. When it is done, all that is left in the flask is a bunch of crap. I transferred all of the product to a vial, and the total yield turned out to be 2.85 grams, which is 47%. This is exactly the same as the paper I was following. Besides being pretty, thiobenzoyl chloride is also useful as a reagent for making thionoesters in a simple way. So let's try it out. So I set up a small beaker and add in a tiny stir bar. I then add 0.12 grams of phenol, 5 ml of DCM, about 0.16 grams of thiobenzoyl chloride, and about 0.3 ml of triethylamine. Then as the final ingredient, which will catalyze this reaction, a little bit of DMAP. Within a few minutes, the mixture turns orange. In the reaction, thiobenzoyl chloride will react with phenol to form the corresponding thionoester, which can be purified by column chromatography. Anyhow, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing some pink chemistry to alleviate any yellow chemistry you might have seen. Pause to see the cost of this video, and with that I would like to thank you for watching, and as always a special thanks to my Rotovap support group on Patreon. See ya!